on this episode we're going to be comparing two products one from Harbor Freight the other one from Fluke and I know a lot of people are going to say how are you going to compare a Fluke meter with a Harbor Freight meter the answer is a simple one budget everybody's on a budget it all depends on how much money you're willing to pay for a tool that you're going to be using either for a hobby or a profession so we're going to go over details of these two products and let's see how they're going to compare to each other Let's begin with the Harbor Freight Semtech Multimeter. At the time of this video, I was checking the website and the price is $12. So it's very inexpensive. And that's good as long as it works. So if this is your first meter, it's budget friendly. But keep in mind, the controls, if you're new into this, it's a little bit confusing. So you have to know what you're gonna measure and the different ranges. So that's something that you have to keep in mind when you purchase this unit. But that comes with the territory, like I said, it's a very inexpensive unit. So you have to be willing to basically deal with certain things that you don't have to think about on other meters. For example, the display on this unit, once you change the settings, the units, they won't, they won't show the units on the display at the bottom. So you have to double check and keep that in mind every single time you take a measurement, double check your units. Also, if you're measuring ohms, there's two menus or two different ranges. For the upper range, you're going to need an external unit, so that's an additional cost to the meter. And to use the leads, you're going to have three different spots depending on the measurement that you're going to take, so that's something else that you have to think about. For a meter that costs $12, there are certain things that you have to compromise like manufacturing details that are overlooked when you're buying something at this price point. For example, certain things won't align perfectly and the more you look into it, the more stuff you will find. So if this is something that bothers you, I can't really recommend this meter for you. And in order to grab the attention from the buyer, they're overcompensating certain things like the clamp size. For me, it's it's just huge. You will never you will never need something that big. The leads are ready for 10 amps, a thousand volts, and they're cat two. And once you start handling the leads, you will notice very quickly that they're made out of plastic. So when you handle these, the feeling is going to be completely different they're gonna be more slippery than the high-end ones. They also feature a plastic cap. This way you prevent unwanted poking into either materials or your own skin. And connecting those leads, you have the wire. The wire, it's flexible, it's a little bit stiff, but flexible enough to do the job. As I mentioned before, depending on the application or the measurement that you're gonna use, you have to choose your proper location for the leads. So read your instruction manuals. For Fluke, I'm featuring the Fluke 362. The description of it is a true RMS clamp meter. They have several models, but this is the model 362, which is designed for the Chinese market. But as far as the measurements, everything is the same. I'll go over the details later on in the video. But technically, you can take advantage of a better pricing, even though the unit is as good as the American version. I look pretty close and I don't see any defects at all on this unit. Everything looks very well put together. I don't see anything that stand out, so I'm very happy with this unit. And when you compare the two clamps, yeah, the Harbor Freight is way much bigger, but personally, if the wire is thicker, let's say, than my finger, I feel like I shouldn't get near to it. The LCD display is not illuminated, so if you're working on a dark area, you won't be able to see it unless you have a flashlight. The user interface on these meter is streamlined, so you only have two buttons and the knob that basically you turn but there's no ranges different ranges for let's say volts or amps the materials that they use for the leads it's very rubbery so you have that grippy feeling 
their cat 2 a thousand volts and 10 amps also so you have the same ratings on these leads as the harbor freight they also feature safety caps for the leads if you have them on on this one you can still use it you still have the protection against poking they're safer but since you have that tiny tip as Pose, you can still use it for measuring and on this unit you have two leads two connectors so there's no confusion so there it is that's the Fluke 362 model now let's go over the comparison with both meters for DC I'm gonna be using a 18660 battery this is a very common battery for flashlights vapes and that kind of stuff that really require a lot of energy. The operating voltage for this battery is 3.7, but when you charge them, they should have 4.2 volts. So let's see how much we got. And the meter is measuring three volts. This is a 3.7 volt battery, but when you charge it, you should have 4.2, so it's off. So let's do it again. Let's see if we replicate this reading. Three again. So if you're measuring voltage on DC, I don't, I don't really recommend this meter. It's off. Now let's do the same test with the Fluke. We know that on this battery we'll have 4.2 volts. That's a, a known value. So you go back to volt DC and the meter will do the range for you. You don't have to guess it. So there we go, we have 4.2 volts. So let's see, let's do it again. 4.2. If you're trying to troubleshoot anything that is driven by this 18650 battery, I highly recommend to use the Fluke instead of the Harbor Freight because you have a more accurate reading than the Harbor Freight one. Let's do a weight comparison. 284 grams which will translate to 10 ounces look 204 grams which translate to 7.2 ounces on this visual comparison you will see the two leads on top is the Fluke, on the bottom is the Harbor Freight. As you can see, even though the rating is the same, the design is slightly different, the materials are different, the wire gauge on the Fluke is thicker. Also, you can see the difference in finish due to the different material. You have the rubbery feeling for the Fluke and the plasticky feeling for the Harbor Freight one. Now let's go over the main feature of this meter, which is the clamp. The clamp will basically measure the disturbance of the electromagnetic field that creates while the current goes through the wire. So you have to put the clamp over the wire. So if you're in a tight space, this is going to be kind of difficult because of the size of the clamp. It could get very tricky. With the fluke meter, the clamp, it's not too big, not too small. For me, it's just about the right size. And at the same time, it's very handy to get into these tight spaces. Also, I love the practicality of this unit. It's very streamlined. There's only two plugs or two locations where to put the leads, making the whole operation easier. When you're measuring the current, if it is alternate, you're always gonna have two wires, one positive, one ground, or one positive, one negative. So at a certain instant, you're gonna have a wire that is gonna carry the load one way, and then on the other wire, you're gonna have the current traveling in the opposite direction. So if you put the clamp over the two wires, you're gonna have a current going one way and another current going in the opposite direction. So it's gonna cancel them out. You're gonna have a zero on the reading. So in order to avoid that mistake, you have to identify which one is the life wire and you have to isolate that wire and put the clamp around it. And by doing this, you should have a very accurate reading. I would like to remind you when you're using this meter to be very cautious and follow all the safety rules. So before you open the panel, if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend that you stay away from it and 
let somebody else that is fully qualified to make the measurement. In modern panels, you're gonna see a sticker telling you the exposure, so don't ignore these warnings. It could get very, very dangerous. Now let's give it a try with the Harbor Freight clamp meter. First thing to do is to make sure that you're using the right setting for the right range. So let's see. The measurement will fluctuate because depending on the proximity to the wire. So let's say over here we got 9.2, 9.1 amps. On the left side, we're going to have about 12, 11.9 amps. And with the fluke, make sure you put it on amps for alternate current. And let's see, 9.1, 9.2, 9.2 and on the left side we're gonna have 12.3 amps I have no way to verify the current but on this test they were fairly close and after this a lot of people are gonna be asking which one is a better value and uh, I understand there's a lot of concern people don't want to make an investment and then all of a sudden find out oh my god They find out that they overpaid or they made the wrong choice. On this particular case, it all depends on what you're planning to use the unit for. For simple troubleshooting hobbyists, Harbor Freight is, is a good value, but personally, I like the Fluke better. I think it's a more professional unit, and at the same time, I feel more safe using this unit than Harbor Freight. But I have to mention, it didn't come with a case, so. I'm gonna get the Harbor Freight case and use it for my fluke meter. If you're interested in getting these items, I'm gonna be leaving the links on the video description. The pricing at this point for the Harbor Freight is $12. Fluke is about $99. And that's a pretty good deal if you compare the American or Western version, which is $130. That's a difference of $30, that's a pretty good deal. So if you like this video, let me know, give it a thumbs up. And also if you learned something watching my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.